Hi pals and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 and today I'm platooned up with Redwood Forest on the 8.9 test server in our Yak Panzer E100. I haven't played this tank for almost half a year now probably, but this was the very first game I played after that time and I must say it really motivated me again to keep on grinding down this tank line because at the moment I'm stuck at tier 6 with the uh, Yak Panzer 4 which is not a very good tank at all but playing this beast here and especially playing this game really motiv motivated me to keep on grinding out the Yak Panzer 4 because after the Yak Panzer 4 it's all good news really and <laughs> Look at that bad chat. He was just thinking, oh yeah, I'm just going to quickly zip over that road. And um, then I just put that 1,000 damage hit into his side. That was amazing. So um, yeah, that's just why I love the Jagdpanzer E100. And um, yeah, I was just saying after the Jagdpanzer 4 in this line, it's actually all very good news. Like you've got the Jagdpanzer, which is amazing. Uh, Ferdinand or the Yak Panther 2, which are both very good. The Yak Tiger, which I absolutely adore. And then finally, you get this guy here, and oh my days, this is such a good tank. Uh, I think the main reason why I really like it is because it's got this amazing gun, but also because it's got armor. And I like tanks with armor because they allow you to be very aggressive. And uh, yeah, that's probably why I like playing this tank. <laughs> Look at that IS3. We just took nearly all his health off with only one hit. Oh my days. I'm saying oh my days quite a lot here, aren't I? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm pushing forwards. Angling my armor slightly. And that's see, Can we get a shot into that E100? We only track him. But that was a really awkward angle. Now that E100 there's burning. Probably somebody got a shot to his transmission in the lower glaciers. There's an AMX 50B now. AMX 50B's got no chance of bouncing my shell. So bye bye AMX 50B. And I must admit, wasting a shell with 1000 damage potential on 400 damage. Well, is that... A good choice I'm not quite sure but it took a very dangerous gun out of the game so I guess it was the right thing to do and I didn't have any other targets to shoot at and the amazing thing about this gun is although it's got this amazing alpha damage the reload time well it is long but it's not that long really it's not much longer than for example on the object 268 and it hasn't got amazing DPM but the DPM still is pretty good and <laughs> look at that we get a really juicy hit into the T62A. Now, in retrospect, I should have probably rather taken out the fighting vehicle because he's a lot more dangerous. But um, <laughs> look at this Rheinmetall Borzik Waffenträger. We can take him out in one shot, basically, if we roll high. So, first of all, we're going to take care of the T62A because he's got really good DPM and is probably more dangerous than that Rheinmetall. I think for Borsig Waffenträger is using the 15cm gun with which he'll probably not be able to penetrate. Maybe it's only got 250mm of penetration. Oh, oh, the fighting vehicle's aiming at me. Quickly drawn to cover. He still gets a shot until he knocks out my loader. But now he's really, really fucked. <laughs> oh yeah, there goes our third kill. And uh, I obviously uh, uh, take care of my loader by using a med pack because... Having a killed loader on this tank is just a death sentence because the reload goes up to 30 seconds. At least it's got two loaders, that's really good because that means that if one's lo uh, one loader's knocked out, it's not that bad, but it's still pretty bad. And 30 seconds reload is very, very long. Now that IS-7, I think, got a very big hit into me, and now I'm just playing uh, peekaboo, basically, with this Rheinmetall. But he's going to make a mistake at some point. Yes, that was a mistake. And I got my fourth kill. Now there's only a uh, Waffentrager of E100 and an IS-7 left. So, uh, the Waffentrager seems to be pretty competent. He's already got three kills. But now he's dead. It's only the IS-7. Let's see if we can pick up a frag on him. We know where he is. But 
But ISM is a pretty speedy tank. He might have run away already. I don't know where this Fosh 155 is trying to go. But the Object 268 takes out for ISM. And that was the end of that game. And uh, that was just such a... It really showed how amazing this tank is. The raw brute force of this gun, this 17 centimeter gun with 1050 average damage per shot is just amazing. Now, I think the reason why I stopped playing this tank was because once the FV215B183 was introduced, I kind of thought that the Yakpan Z100 was kind of obsolete because the two with the 183 has got not all that much longer reload, but the damage is a lot higher with a hash ammo. But I think the fact that the Yakpan Z100 has got very good armor and that the gun has a faster reload and the fact that you don't have to fire hash ammo to put out this monstrous damage. You just fire the AP ammo, which is a lot more reliable because it's got better penetration and secondly, you can still penetrate spaced armor and sloped armor very reliably because the AP ammo gets armor normalization. So I think I really like the Yakpanzer E100 more than the FE because it's just more reliable and because it's got better armor and I really like my tanks armored nicely. So yeah, let's see some after game stats. And apropos after game stats, this time I remembered that it's not possible to upload the replay to whatreplays.com from the test server and I screenshotted the post back results screen. So we're actually going to have post back results in this game. So we got 68,070 credits and 3,608 experience, but we were running a premium account and that was our times too. Still that was enough experience to get us our mastery badge on the test server in our first game basically in this tank which is really amazing and uh, we got um, let's see what I think that's Reaper and Master Gunner but I'm not quite sure because this is just a screenshot I can't get a mouse over but uh, still that was a pretty nice game and you can see we picked up four frags and damaged quite a lot of enemies critted four enemies and even enabled spotting damage to the Batshot and the E100 so we got the most experience and the most damage on the entire team. 5,000 damage is a lot. And the crazy thing is that this tank only has to fire five shots to get that much damage. Now, we fired more shots because we killed, for example, the AMX 50B on low health. The re or we also knocked out the Rheinmetall Borsig Waffentrager on less than 100 HP. So that's why we had more hits. Or we fired more shots than five but basically with average damage rolls five shots would have been enough to get this amount of damage um if we look at the detailed report we can see that we fired eight shots which is three more uh, eight of them hit and all eight penetrated the damage was very good as i already said we received four hits of which all four penetrated which is kind of disappointing especially because i was carrying on over time about how great this tank's armor is but i was probably just not doing a very good job of angling it because angling is really essential on these german tanks to make it more difficult to penetrate the lower glaciers we received 3,190 potential damage. Now, that's more than we've got hit points because we've only got 2,200 hit points, as you can see back here. So, that means that probably one of these four penetrating hits, or two probably even, only tracked us. So, that means that it's not as bad as it looks. We spotted one enemy, damaged seven, that's a lot, destroyed four, and... 1,400 spotting damage was done thanks to us. That's a lot of spotting damage, especially for a tank destroyer. And we picked up 68,000 credits, and although the ammo is insanely expensive on this tank, we could keep 28,000. So that's always nice. And I think I'm playing this, I'm not really playing this tank the way it should be played, because I'm playing it extremely aggressively. And I really love playing my tank destroyers extremely aggressively. That's why I love the Fosh, that's why I love this tank, that's why I love of object 263 because they've all got amazing frontal armor and decent speed which means that they can actually roll up in front of the attack and 
be the first line of offense and deal out that monstrous damage. And I think that's the reason why I didn't really enjoy playing the Waffenträger and I didn't enjoy playing the, for example, the Object 268 because they haven't got good armor and they just get killed if you play them front end. And I just like to get, you know, really stuck into the action and really just be in the front line with tank destroyers and deal out that amazing damage. And I just really love the Jagdpanzer E100 because it's got this amazing health pull, it's got amazing armor, and look at its weight, 134 tons, it's an amazing ramming machine. So yeah, this tank is absolutely amazing, uh, I really love it, I'm definitely going to try to get my hands on it on the test server, and um, not on the test server, on the live server of course, and I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did playing it, if you did consider giving it a thumbs up below or even subbing to my channel I would appreciate that a lot, and thanks for watching as usual, I hope I'll see you in one of my next videos and bye bye.